Hey guys, um, I'm back with the single issues of this week. Um, uh, we all know that it's the big week for DC and this is why I will uh, review uh, Rebirth number one uh, by DC. Um, but I also have a few variants, uh, namely Divinity number two, Divinity two number two, uh, Ray number 13, um, The Fix number two, uh, Vision number seven and Heavy Metal number 280. This is Grant Morrison's um, first issue as a um, chief editor and I have to say he, he did a decent job on it. Uh, I liked it. Uh, there seems to be like a big um, thing with anthologies right now. Uh, Alan Moore uh, released his anthology uh, Cinema Purgatorio uh, with Avatar Press a few weeks ago, which I didn't find to be especially interesting. Um, so um, in between those two, I would definitely pick Heavy Metal. Uh, also like the, the value for money relation uh, is just much better. Those are like 100 and plus um, pages of story for $8. Uh, also a few interviews, um, some features about artists. Uh, I liked it. It's nice. There is one story by um, I think she's a Scandinavian artist. I never heard of her before. Anna Loreen Cornum. That's uh, the um, page on the right. I will show you a little bit of the art. It, the art is nice but not super spectacular. Uh, but it's 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 special and it's very eerie. Um, and I thought, wow, this is like uh, the story that I missed in Cinema Purgatory because this is basically a horror story uh, by a woman. Um, this was a big critique point with Purgatorio. It's all, uh, it's all men. I mean, I'm not like this kind of guy who, who uh, reads too much into this. Uh, but still, this really felt much more diverse um, stylistically from uh, you know the storytelling was uh, very different you have a lot of Grant Morrison typical um, grandiose madness crazy stuff you have a little bit of fantasy you have a lot of science fiction you have also like the first chapter of um, um, a serial uh, pen by Morrison himself with the uh, super weird looking characters who are talking nonsense all the time <laughs> I don't know I didn't I didn't care for that one too much, but um, altogether it was um, really a very a quite decent issue, and I will definitely be back back for um, for another one. Um, like I said, the art is very diverse, so this is a good entry point for uh, anyone who hasn't um, tried heavy metal yet. I think this is a new kind of heavy metal. It's not your dad's heavy metal anymore. So um, I will I would give it a shot. Next up is vision number seven. Uh, this will be a short review. It's just another perfect issue by Tom King and uh, guest penciler Michael Walsh uh, who does a fantastic job. Um, very, very moody. It's not about action sequences but more like the little things. Uh, human interactions and I think uh, the artist does a great job regarding that because it's all about it's all about how we relate to each other and yeah it's a great comic what can I say next up the fix number two by Nick Spencer and Steve Lieber by Image Comics this uh, got quite a lot of buzz online and um, I get it it's nice it's fun but if you know Nick Spencer comics, uh, this is an expensive comic. And uh, I mean, I enjoy it, it's good, but I read quite a few of his recent Ant-Man and Captain Americas, and I think I will stick with Ant-Man. I might be back for a third issue of The Fix, but I don't really need like two or three Nick Spencer comics a month. I'm sorry to say that. Um, Rye number 13. This is a um, um, new uh, jumping on point um, which ties in into 4001 AD 
um, the crossover, the summer crossover Valiant is having right now. And it's really, really good. Um, the artist Kafu is pff, fantastic. And the story by Matt Kent, um, the first chapter of it, wow, it's really, really strong. Um, it reminded me a little bit of Descender, uh, if you know it by Jeff Lemire. Um, the thing is, I didn't love Descender, but I love this issue. It's fantastic. And if you were thinking about giving Valiant a shot, or especially Rai, this is the perfect um, introductory issue to this series. Um, big thumbs up. Divinity 2, it's the second miniseries featuring this concept characters. Um, and this is the second issue. Um, I liked it, um, but it was a very quick read through. I think I needed like, I don't know, three, four, five minutes. Um, and I mean, I, I shouldn't judge it solely on, on this, um, because I mean, if it's good, it's good. And it was fairly good, but I felt like, wow, for, for a comic, um, which is, um, you know, has only four chapters, it's a four issue miniseries. I would expect a little more, uh, story beats to happen per issue. You know, this was like. Just, um, I think this could have been condensed by someone like Dysert, Joshua Dysert, another author uh, um, who writes a lot of Valiant comics. This would have been like six or seven pages. Uh, I mean, they're beautiful, um, they're great. And I would recommend it because it's a great series. Uh, it's very meta. Uh, it's a little bit like Solar. Uh, I don't know if you remember him, another old Valiant hero. Um, and that, um, the, the powers of those divinity characters are near endless. They can reassemble uh, reality. Uh, so it's quite mind-bending. And for that alone, I would totally get it. It's by Matt Kent and uh, Trevor Hersine, and it's really good. So we come to DC Rebirth number one. Um, I guess you have been spoiled by now, if not, this could contain some spoilers, so just warning you. Um, I have to say, I never was a big DC guy. When I read comics, a lot of superhero comics, I was, when I was younger, I read Marvel. So I don't have a big connection to all those characters and stories from the 40s or 30s onwards. Um, and I guess this is why uh, the New 52 were introduced a few years ago, just to give guys like me a chance to experience something from the beginning. Um, now they have decided at DC Editorial that this doesn't really work out because let's be honest, most people buying superhero comics are the same people who bought them 10 years ago and 20 years ago. So there is kind of, um, debuting uh, so the reboot they um, they did uh, in 2011 um, they kind of take it back but not completely um, they say they want uh, the best of all worlds they want the legacy to come back which is fine um, I was really happy um, or I was lucky uh, that I just read some flash uh, um, best of stories so I was a kind of familiar with uh, those um, legacy characters, you know, um, and not only Barry Allen, but this Wally guy and, uh, you know, all those different characters who were the Flash at one time, uh, because really it's not very new reader friendly. So if you're a Marvel guy or if you're a guy who, who's not very much into DC, DC history and continuity, you will get quite lost reading this one. Um, there is a lot of information dumped at you. I would call it um, an explanation porn. Uh, so it's a great porn for people who are who know those characters and um, who were um, expecting this to happen, you know, to for them to come back or for those old stories that they love so much to become relevant again. I think this is a great book for those people. For people like me who are not familiar with a lot of, um, you know, 
a lot of stuff from DC history. Um, it felt very much not like a story, but more like a collage of um, of sorts. So um, I know everyone's loving G.F. Johns and um, I don't, <laughs> I'm sorry. I find his writing style a bit childish and a bit naive. I like that he's trying to overcome the darkness and the seriousness of you know what started in the in the mid to late 80s with uh, um, with Miller's Dark Knight and with Watchmen and the Killing Joke and everything. And he wants to overcome that. He wants to become more, you know, positive, optimistic. This is okay. Um, I really like the Flash TV series, for example, for exactly that that reason. But um, it doesn't really work that good in this comic. Uh, this is really continuity porn and. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't really need to spoil anything uh, other than you should give it a shot because it's three dollars and I, I, I don't say I didn't enjoy it at all. I did. Um, but this is more like a zero issue, you know, you just uh, sample this new universe, don't get all the in jokes and you get something and this is a big spoiler right now so guys if you don't want to be spoiled just look away now i will give you just one big page which um was quite shocking to me Ta -da. you might remember this little button so this is what they did they tried to connect everything that they have at dc comics and from a um you know commercial standpoint this is a good idea uh, if you have best sell a best-selling um, perennial like um, Watchmen in your rights um, bibliotheque, you should take it out and work with it. I get it. Uh, all the people who are complaining about it, come on, it's a business. So it's a business decision and this is also all Rebirth thing. It's a business decision. Uh, DC was selling very poorly recently and they thought about it, what can we do? We have to get those people back who are always buying our uh, stuff, the people who are just DC fans. And this is for DC fans. And um, I will get um, a few of the other uh, offerings like Wonder Woman by Greg Rucka. And uh, my favorite new uh, author, Tom King is writing Batman now. So I will get that and I will talk about it um in my reviews but more like from a you know from a position of a non hardcore dc fan just a guy who likes his superheroes from time to time but prefers them written in a more mature and intelligent way i can't say uh this is for me so um it's nice it's three dollars get it um and just be back for um, a graphic novel review next week. Um, it will be a European um, graphic novel, which you can also buy in the States. You can subscribe uh, my channel here. Thanks for watching and have a good time. Bye bye.